how do you set foundation beams when everything goes wrong? First, you grind and level the column. Next, you figure out how to move heavy lumber. Oh, that's gonna be and finally, you put all your hope on a big wrench. So what we're doing is we, we finished all the columns, but now we're kind of like sanding them down to kind of get them all nice and perfectly smooth and level. Uh, so right now she finished out the one all the way over there, which was kind of getting us just a little bit off of, uh, of it being level because of all the bumps and everything like that. And now that we got that off, now it's getting pretty level. So we have our middle one done and our front one done or the back one done. And so now we're gonna go over to the next one. took out the aluminum what happened was uh, we saw that there's a couple little like openings you can kind of still see a little bit they weren't that big we did was we figured we tried to look it up on the internet and uh, so they said it's not structurally in, uh, unstable because they were so little uh, they couldn't see any rebar or anything like that there was nothing st structurally in sound or anything like that but it's just like for aesthetic purposes it doesn't look good and to just patch it up as well because if you patch it up, then at least it won't start damaging anymore. So what we did was that we put it, we patched it up with, man, what was it? I think it was one part sand and one part cement. Um, but we made it into like a little bit of a paste. And we put them in all the little cracks. With so, glue? Uh, oh yeah, with the, the cement glue. We, and that's why it's blue. We just put a bunch of cement glue to try to make sure that everything stays there. And we just filled out all the cracks. So the good thing is that it didn't come out looking as pretty as we did hope. Uh, it looked prettier with the aluminum on. <laughs> but it did, the good thing is that it's not going to be like structurally unstable for the house and everything like that. So that was the most important thing. This is how the columns pretty much just came out. Um, as you can see, we didn't we we haven't done, we haven't cleaned up this one just yet. There's still some quite some minor holes. And this is what really happened to the other ones. Uh, we put this back on, this aluminum back on, just because it's been raining and we don't want all the all the mud to get it inside there. It was really hard to clean uh, because, uh, as you can see, the other one, we actually did finish it, but we had to first clean it out. We had to scrape out as much dirt as possible. So that's what happened with them. As you can see, there's just a little bit of these bubbles is what they're called. They're, uh, it was honeycombing, I believe that was what the term was. So our columns here are, I think they were 12. 15 inches in diameter, I think. They're pretty wide. That's they are huge. pretty wide. So we went a little bit overboard with it. We wanted uh, one for it to just hold the house perfectly there. Two, we live in an earthquake zone. So we wanted something nice and thick and sturdy. And uh, we weren't able to do our rebar in circles. So we, were, we, had our, we had our rebar done in squares. So we had to make our circle a little bit bigger in order for the rebar to be perfectly in there. So there are some parts that have a little bit further away from the rebar but it's those corners and that was one of the main reasons by it. this the third main reason for it was that now that we have a piece sticking out as you can see we have quite a bit out we can still lay something here so we, if we whenever we want to extend the house a little bit further we have quite a bit of distance to be able to put another piece of wood here to just go that way so we do want to make the house a little bit bigger in the future um, and so we have this on every single column so that's why we just need to clean them up and fill up all the little gaps. This is very little. Yeah. All right, cool. So now we have some footage of it. Now that we're finally done with the columns, uh, Eric started to make some stairs. Starting to look like stairs, really high stairs, not for the short.
we are putting on the second coat of, lin of boiled linseed onto our beams. These are going to be the beams that are underneath our house. Uh, so we just wanted to protect them uh, a little bit before we put them actually down there because it does rain here a lot. And they're actually cypress as well, which is good because they have that natural protection against mold and mildew and about getting wet a lot. So that's the good thing about this. And so we're going to put our second coat. We put the first one yesterday and uh, we're going to do the second one now. I wrote my disc, put some holes at the end to pull it, a little board so it doesn't slide off, really straight. <laughs> and then two holes here and rope so that we can push and pull as we need to. so easy that was easier than I think you know how hard it was to move it from room to room oh yeah now we have to bring it down all the stairs yeah that we gotta carry very right? soon yeah i think so yeah You got it? Yeah. Okay, here. here. Okay, just push it a little bit forward. Ready? Can we count three? One, two, three. Yeah, yeah, keep going. Put, Put it down. Here? Yeah. Wanted. The beams are fresh green lumber, each weighing about a hundred pounds. Carrying the first one down was a big wake up call to us, so we decided to go back to the drawing board. We decided to bring it down on the sled, best idea so far. first hole in our beam for our first screw um, and we don't have electricity here so we have our hand drill and we bought and we bought this as well Oh, 
Let's do this. Oh yeah? I don't have to go around in a circle. Oh. So, we have a major problem. What's the problem? We had a hand drill, manual hand drill, to use on this Bosch 5 8 auger bit to go through the wood. And then we found out that this is hexagonal and the, and the hand drill that we had was for triangular. So it stripped it a little bit and it stopped going through. And then I rented a machine to do it and that didn't work at all. And now uh, somebody let me borrow this to try to get this auger bit out of here. But uh, it's working so far. So it's out. Now we gotta figure out how to make holes into the cypress beam. Okay. You ready? Yes. Next. Porque este está uh, stuck. Porque está verde. Muy verde. Más verde del otro. Sí. Wow. We want to give a big shout out to Melvin. He has been a really good friend to us. We got to know him as we needed some trees cut and he is a professional lumberjack. We got to know him over the time here and he wanted to help us out once we told him about our bit getting stuck in the green lumber. This was a lucky break for us as he had experience drilling through green lumber. I think you got a lower there. Yeah. yeah. Si sale torcido no es mi problema. Sí. Si sale torcido no es mi problema. Poco tu problema? No. Sí, porque tú dar esta máquina por mí. No porque la máquina no está torcida. Torcido está el tirado. <risa> Vamos a ver. How do I know if it's straight? I don't know. Am I straight? It looks straight, see what I said, that's straight. Mm -hmm. Right. There. A little to the left. Uh, there. Yeah. 